the the thing that also bummed me out about what you wrote about, frankly, was the UN. Uh, because yeah. I, um, you know, I have, I guess, you know, the romantic uh, notion of the UN that um, I grew up with and you know, have always accepted. And just the other day, I had I got my son a, a Lego of the of the UN building and explained to him that this was was there to prevent war. And now I got to go back and tell him, hey, dude, listen, we got to have another talk when you get a little bit. Old. He was only seven, so I'm not prepared to tell him the, the reality. But I think we can handle it. Why, t- tell us. I think seven year olds, first of all, should absolutely buy and read this book on their parents account. Let me be clear about that. I'll do my best. Um, <laughs> my best. So, yeah, I, I have bad news about the U.N. Uh, and this was another finding that surprised me when I did the research. There was also a moment of decision when uh, American post-war planners uh, reached the conclu- having previously rejected the idea of a new League of Nations is totally naive. I mean, it was precisely because no universal grouping of nations or no hopes for public opinion to express itself could prevent power politics uh, that they wanted the United States now to install itself as the dominant military force in the world. So, you know, for the very reason they wanted American global supremacy, they didn't want a universal world organization. Okay. And that's basically the logic through the end of 1941. But then they come to the view that, well, wait a minute, we should rethink this. What's the best way to implement uh, American global dominance, especially if it's in tandem with Great Britain, which a lot of Americans think of as an empire, because it is. Uh, And I talked about how even people like John Foster Dulles found that kind of scheme to be imperialistic. So they worried you know, would the American public refuse to shoulder the burdens of armed dominance, a role the United States had never played uh, or even seriously put on the table in its debate? And this was the main reason why post-war planners in the State Department in 1942 came to the conclusion, you know, it would be useful to have something. They, They really didn't know what they were exactly envisioning yet, but it'd be useful to have some kind of general world organization with every state a member, so that it will look like the United States is um, leading the world in a uniquely enlightened, inclusive, participatory way, provided that we're uh, still fulfilling our original goals, which are essentially for the United States to have preponderant power and define the way the world goes. It's just so depressing, Steve. <laughs> I mean, sorry. sorry. I mean, maybe I, I mean, I'm smiling. But, I'm trying. I know. Well, I, and, and, um, and I, you know, I'm not going to go home and, and, and trash my kids, uh, Lego, uh, building of the UN, uh, quite yet. But it also, what, it, what it also sort of, I guess, belies is the awareness of just how undemocratic these elites were being at the time. I mean, it's one thing to say, like, you know, the American public, um, they want us to be, they want to be the world's, you know, moral authority, or they want to be what, however they would tell themselves or whatever it is they want, or they want all of the goodies that we're going to get in terms of our American way of life that are associated with this. And, you know, but by having to sort of provide a fig leaf of something that's, you know, markedly different um, suggests to me that they knew what they were doing was, I guess, maybe, you know, like uh, what, what we call it Straussian now, I guess, or they knew that they knew that they were, um, you know, we're in charge here and uh, we're just going to feed this to the dupes. How remarkable is it that, you know, when the United States enters the war, It's fighting Japan. It's starting to fight the Nazis. Uh, The Soviet Union is uh, fighting for its life. These post-war planners are sitting there in the State Department, and they're worried about the American public. And they're worried about the American public with the presumption that we're going to defeat the Nazis, we're going to defeat the the Japanese, and we're going to have supremacy over the Soviet Union. Correct. That is that is all. That is all correct. If I can just completely uh, non sequitur here. 
when I have a conversation with uh, the guy from the Lincoln Project and he tells me that these political um, uh, these political uh, operatives are not thinking past the election and they're only thinking about getting rid of Donald Trump, I give you this example right here, where in the midst of a World War II, we've already got people who are strategically in planning out you know, the world organization that's going to exist following World War II after, you know, the, the deaths of millions um, and uh, how that's going to maintain U.S. hegemony. So I just although I will I will say this, I wish we had a political class today that was as far sighted as the people I described. I'm, obviously, I'm critical of what they came up with. Uh, you know, less in their own time, given the realities of power that they faced, than for where it's left us 80 years later. But that said, I mean, they were making a good faith effort to respond to surprising international events. We're in the midst of, of a pandemic where we're experiencing 9-11 scale death of Americans every three days or so. And, you know, that, that number could go up uh, as we get into the winter. I'm not seeing a comparable reckoning uh, with the realities of the 21st century world. Uh, so I, I honestly, we'd be improved if, if uh, our current uh, crop of experts went back and was just as undemocratic as the experts from World War II, uh, which would be more democratic than they are right now, as well as more responsive to events in the world. Right. Uh, yeah. It, it, we, we went from the frying pan into the fire in terms of like, uh, both in terms of a democracy and, frankly, in terms of competence uh, in that regard. 